Governor Kaber Yusuf rejects appeal court's explanation of typo error in certified true copy. As Yoruba community urges others, others to intervene in Kano political unrest. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. The Kano state government has rejected the appeal court's explanation that the error in the certified true copy CTC of its judgment on the state's governorship election was a typographical faux The court initially declared APC's Nasiru Gawuna as the winner, but the certified true copy CTC of the judgment surfaced on Wednesday, indicating that the court had affirmed Yusuf's victory contrary to the verdict it had earlier given on, on Friday, and indeed, parts of that same verdict indicated that it affirmed its position earlier given on Friday. Aruna Dederi, the Kano State Commissioner for Justice, criticized the court's explanation. Meanwhile, Yoruba community members in Kano State have urged all national Yoruba leaders and intellectuals to engage with President Bola Tinubu on a political solution to the state's political impasse. Taufik Olao Shebikon, the group's Secretary General, made the request during a press conference in Kano. He called on all Yoruba Obas and leaders of thought to wade into the Kano situation without further delay by engaging President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu for a possible political settlement of the Kano lockdown. He noted that the Yoruba community is worried that the unfolding political situation will have adverse effects on the community in the state. Take a listen. It is clear to all that the NMPP won the state. We are very worried that the unfolding political situation have adverse effect on us, the Yorubas in Kano. Kano is a very volatile state, politically, and this is the reason why all men and women of good, good will should be concerned about the situation in Kano and rally around towards a collective initiative to, uh, to save the state from any calamity which will affect us and our livelihood. In this regard, we are using this platform to call on all Yoruba others and leaders of thought to wade into the Kano situation without further delay by engaging President Bola Ahmed Tinubu for a possible political settlement of the Kano lockdown. It is clear. Yeah, this the issue is an executive director of Center for Awareness on Justice and Accountability, Kaja, Kabiru Saidu Dakata, and the lawyer Abdul Karim Mode, are both based in Kano. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, let me start with you, Kabiru. Uh, I wonder what the supplication of the Yoruba, uh, Yoruba group would amount to, given the fact that this is, uh, this is a cause that is already on the machinery of the judicial system. Would you want to help us here? How would you respond to that? I, I think we need to uh, appreciate the fact that there are also uh, key stakeholders and um, they have every right to contribute to anything that will ensure justice to, you know, anybody involved in the, in the matter. And um, they did what they did because they believe if the right thing is not done, it will affect, you know, uh, everybody, including their members in the state. So... What they did is not in any way uh, against the fact that the issue is still passing through a judicial process, but they know that if justice is not done, uh, definitely 
uh, most innocent people are going to be affected. So if I understand their message, uh, this is exactly the direction of their message. And I think uh, they did uh, the right thing as, as key stakeholders. Abdul Karim, uh, anybody who is familiar with the history of Kano knows that uh, for almost 300 years now, be it succession to the emirship or indeed the governorship of Kano, partisanship can be very, very volatile and violent in Kano. Um, to anybody who is looking at it from outside the realm of the law, uh, maybe this shout is necessary. I know you are a lawyer, you may want to help us from the two sides. The legal view of it and the appeal of the Yoruba group. We, we may have to go back to uh, Kabir whilst uh, Abdul Karim is trying to tidy uh, the workings of his device. Um, Kabir, uh, how would you respond to the fact that there is a history of a rabbit and violent partisanship in Kano, even predating, uh, predating the modern system of government that produces governor, even in the area of the emirship. Um, so uh, the, this volatility, uh, the, this situation has to be well managed, I guess. How would you respond to that? Uh, you are right to say that um, that history is there. And that will not be unconnected with the, you know, orientation of the Kano people. Uh, Kano people are civilized. Kano people know their rights. Kano people can go a different direction from, you know, uh, the direction even other parts of the country can, can take. So that history you're talking about uh, is because of these factors I mentioned. So in Kano, we speak, you know, with one voice. So anything that will come to, you know, jeopardize that's, uh, that effort, the average Kano person will not take it lightly. So that history is still intact, and that kind of person you used to know has not changed. You know, people can change, but the orientation is still there with the people of Kano State. They don't, you know, take uh, enforcement. You, 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 you cannot come and impose something on them. You can't come and impose something on them. The Kano people know their rights. They know their economic rights, they know their social rights, and also they know their political rights. So if they express their, you know, interest, and if you attempt to, you know, temper with that arrangement, so they will not take it lightly. And this is exactly what happened, or what is trying to happen in Kano State. This is a person that contested an election in 2019. This man won his election in 2019. He defeated the then incumbent governor of the state. Hello? But it was manipulated, you know, to introduce something strange at that time. That is the inconclusion of the election. The election was declared inconclusive and on the day of the rerun, tax were brought into Kano and they intimidated voters. And at the end, the then governor was declared winner of the election. The man went to court in 20. We will get back to you, Abdul Karim. Ab Abdul Karim, we will get back when to you. When he went to court in 2019, he Hello? passed through the three stages of the tribunal, the court of appeal and the Supreme Court, he did not get what he expected to get. He did not do anything 
He waited for another four years. In 2023, he yeah. oh, oh, Okay, uh, contested... Kabir, Kabir I'll, I'll, get, I'll get back to you. Uh, uh, Hello? Uh, let, let me, let me uh, speak to Abdul Karim now. Abdul Karim, uh, can, yeah, you hear, can me? you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Wonderful. Fantastic. Sir. Okay. Uh, you are a lawyer. Yes. And would you want to summarily take us through uh, how far we have, what, what it has taken to bring us to this point of, uh, of uh, very controversial circumstance? You want to give us a summary of it? Well, you know, uh, at the initial stage, there was a petition against His Excellency Abba Kabir Yusuf. The All Progressive Congress was out its candidate challenged the victory of the, His Excellency. And Kano said that is the election 2023. They went to court. They challenged about 83 polling units where the third malpractices and the other corrupt practices occurred in Kano State. In that circumstances, during the trial, they, are, they were only able to bring 32 witnesses in court. 30 witnesses are the witnesses that have spoken directly from the polling units, trying to confirm or baboting and so on and so forth. Two witnesses, that is the one, uh, that is the total number, the total PBC collected in those 30 polling units, they called agents from those respective polling units was just 22,000, was just 22,000. What is the difference between His Excellency Abba Kabur Yusuf and all progressive candidates or its, or its candidates was 128,000 plus. That is assuming without conceding that those witnesses has proved those allegations contained in the petition based on those polling units. They have not breached or they have not been able to what? To bridge the gap that existed between Abba Kabir Yusuf, FEC, and his candidates, which is 128,000 as against 22,000. The tribunal in its own judgment, in its own judgment, when it was delivering the judgment, they said now that they relied on the evidence of a subpoena witnesses, who happens to be an expert witnesses, that 100 and 65,616,000 votes should be deducted from the votes of His Excellency Abba Kabir Yusuf. It is worthy and important to note that in none of the pleadings of the petitioners where they pleaded those votes they alleged to have been illegal. They have not equally pleaded the various polling units where those invalid votes was discovered. They have not equally pleaded where those, the votes, where those oh, illegal oh, 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 okay. ballots uh, uh, was equally ba discovered. Ba barista, and barista, uh, barista yes. uh, we can't retry the case uh, on, a sh on a brief TV show like this. Uh, at, okay. uh, at this point, we know that the court of first instance, the tribunal, ruled in favor of the petitioner. We know, yes. we know that at the official, official reading of the judgment of the appeal, at the court of appeal, the court of second instance similarly ruled in favor of, of the uh, defendant because the appeal from the first instance uh, was from the original defendant. Now, the only thing that is talking this controversy now is the fact that the certified true copy of the judgment has duplicitous uh, passages or paragraphs on the one instance, two paragraphs on a particular page 69, two paragraphs speak to the fact that the governor's position is intact. 
three paragraphs speak to the pronouncement that the governor has lost his appeal. So in cases like this, what should be the recourse of the parties? Okay, we we'll go on a we we'll go on a short uh, a short break now, uh, and when we back, we we'll take it down from where we where we've left it. Welcome back. To be honest with you, I've been in broadcasting for a number of years. It's been a while I've seen. Uh, is Kama or Ijaka trying to wrestle the system from the engineers? But oh, we're back. Um, Kabil, are you there? I'm here. Uh, Kabil, we are in a situation now in Kano that um, is a bit tense, and we really want all residents of Kano to be a bit sober careful, and know that violence ultimately could be very costly. How would you respond to that? You're very right to say that um, the situation in Kano is uh, tense, but um, I would have wanted you to say what caused the situation. And I know you know the answer, everybody knows the answer. You see, justice must not only be done, but it must also be seen to be done. And in a situation where uh, injustice, you are bound to see a situation like the one you are seeing in Kano. You are talking of more than a million uh, uh, voters that voted for a person and their family members and also people who did not even vote for him but um, they know the truth of what happened and they are asking for justice for the person. So it's not about the situation uh, of Kano at the moment is about what caused the situation and who has the solution to the situation. You understand? In 2019, like I said earlier, Abba Kabir Yusuf contested an election. The people of Kano State gave him more than a million votes. He defeated the then Governor of Kano State, Abdullah Umar Ganduji. But the election was declared uh, as inconclusive. Uh, uh, On the day uh, of Kabir, Newton, Kabir, Kabir, we have to be very careful. Yeah. The, last, uh, the, the last elections, that's the 2019 elections, was contested and was litigated to the Supreme Court. And the winner was declared. We cannot be recontesting an election that had been settled, indeed, that the tenure had elapsed. Uh, let me go to Abdul Karim. Abdul Karim, you lawyers, have, you lawyers and the judiciary have put us in this mess now. So how do we get out of the mess? Especially given the fact that we don't want to toy, we don't want to play around with the emotions and the mood of the Kano citizenry. These are people who don't take, uh, who don't take things lying down like that. How do we resolve this? Abdul Karim? Abdul Karim? Can you hear me? Oh, the gremlins are out today. Really how? Okay, uh, Kabil, okay, you want to respond? I, I wanted to conclude a thought, uh, trying to set a background of what happened in 2019. But let me talk of what happened in 2023 and um, what gave birth to the current situation. The man won his election, you know, and 
the defeated candidate, the candidate of the APC, came out to congratulate him and said he is not going to contest his vic that victory. You understand? His party went to court. And the first judgment of the tribunal was delivered in favor of the APC. But for the people of the state, that judgment has a sentiment in it because in the judgment, the name of the candidate of APC, Nasir Yusuf Gauna, was mentioned as the petitioner in that case, and he was not a petitioner. Abba Kabir Yusuf and his party filed an appeal to the Court of Appeal. At the Court of Appeal, you understand, he, the judgment was delivered also in, the, in favor of the APC. But for every lawyer, thank God we are having a lawyer in, our, in, in this conversation. For every reasonable lawyer, after a judgment, if you ask him, the next thing he will tell you is, let us wait and see the, the, the content of the judgment, the written judgment, because it is what he will use, you know, as a guide to head to the next court if you are not satisfied with the judgment. But God in his mercy, God in his wisdom, in that documented written judgment, the victory was given to the candidate of NNPP, Alaji Abba Kabir Yusuf. So the people of the state now had their you know, hope uh, revived because they were not happy with the judgment delivered at the Court of Appeal. So what the situation is telling the world is the people of Kano State are saying, we are not going to allow anybody to take away our mandate. We are not allow, we are not going to allow anybody to take our Abu mandate. Karim, and what we hear unmute, from them, they said they are ready for anything. Abdul Karim, you need to unmute your device. Um, um, Kabir, yeah. the point is that Abdul Karim, can you hear me? Now the case has been appealed and is going to the Supreme Court. Uh, and uh, the lawyer to the governor, Allah Nekwakun, uh, I read somewhere today where he was saying that the so-called the so-called uh, amendment that the that the registrar of the Court of Appeal uh, uh, purportedly mouth that that amendment will not stand in law because the jurisdiction of the appeal court, court of appeal, has expired and that they will go to the Supreme Court with that CTC. What would that amount to, uh, Abdul Karim, you are a lawyer? Will that not be very you know, funny at the level of the Supreme Court? You know, as I told you, the, ju the jurisdiction of the tribunal has already been hosted because 60 days within which to entertain and deliver the, the deliver the judgment has already expired. By what by whatever means, the court of appeal has no any power whatsoever to make, even if it is a clerical error. And in these circumstances, the judgment sought to be edited or sought to be corrected is not even clerical error. It is trying to amend an order, a final order of the court. Because anything touched in that order is like it is completely giving a different meaning to the order granted by the court of appeal itself. So I believe, based on section 285 of the constitution, the court of appeal has no power whatsoever to make any amendment whatsoever because it has become punctus or pisho. It is only the Supreme Court now that has jurisdiction to make such amendments or otherwise. And even before the Supreme Court, we really have to make a serious argument. That but, is but, but the confusing situation now, Abdul Karim, is that when this CTC gets to the Supreme Court, the, C the CTC itself is going to lead to a fundamental confusion 
at the level of the at the level of the Supreme Court, because this is a document that is speaking to two inconsistent languages at the same time. How would the uh, Supreme Court deal, deal with this? This is, you know, this is sad, you know, but it's funny. You know, you know, you know, this is to even show to a to an ordinary common man that this judgment, the judgment of the Court of Appeal, especially in respect of the order granted in favor of the respondent, is faulty completely. It is faulty. It cannot stand. There is no any other law that supports the judgment of the Court of Appeal with re in relation to the order granted in favor of FEC. It is too glaring. It is too glaring. There is no basis. The decision is faulty. And we are challenging part of that decision where it says APC is now declared. Uh, but uh, uh, but Abdul Karim, I, I'm not a lawyer. You are the lawyer here. Yeah, but uh, from the journalistic you know, end of the divide, uh, one of the reasonings of the, of the or two main reasonings of the Court of Appeal or the reason why the Court of Appeal claimed in the reading of the judgment before the CTC came out that they were affirming the decision of the tribunal was because, one, that the governor, as at the time, he was, he was nominated as the candidate of, of his party, was not a bona fide member of the NMPP. That's number one. Number two is the second one that you tried to explain away. That's the invalidation of more than 160 something uh, not properly, not properly uh, registered uh, ballots. Now, the situation is such that the Court of Appeal, however, has given a very controversial CTC, and the two parties are claiming victory. When they get to the Supreme Court now, how would the Supreme Court handle this? You are a lawyer, Air Force. <laughs> well, you know, we already have grounds of appeal. You understand. We already have grounds of appeal, which the party, that is NNPP, lodged an appeal before the Court of Appeal. Challenging part of the decision of the Court of Appeal, if that succeeded, automatically the judgment of the Court of Appeal, in respect of the version we appeal against, it will be set aside. The two versions relied often, when they were reading the judgment, everybody knows that Section 177 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it only relation or it only forbids the issue of independent candidature, as it has been decided in plenty of Supreme Court cases. Peter will be against uh, Bola Tinibu, Atiku Abubakar against Bola Tinibu, recently decided by the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal itself. And the Court of Appeal itself. So by this, this judgment cannot stand. Hello, Barista. The Court of Appeal is... The Court of Appeal... The Court of Appeal is appropriating and property. In some other cases, they said it is pre-election matter. Now it is only in this case of Kano that they say it is a secondary election issue, which is not at all. It is not at all. Then the invalidation of those invalid votes, they relied on Section 71 of the Electoral Act. That section talks about the statement of result, not ballot papers. Not ballot papers. The relevant section under under Electoral Act is Section 63. Sub two. Okay, uh, uh, Abdul Karim, uh, I know you are a lawyer. Well, you can well, go on. You can go on and on on this. Uh, but the unfortunately, the uh, hello, and hello, 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 Abdul Karim. We really have to wrap it up at this juncture. Uh, I, I am very, very grateful uh, for the two of you, uh, Abdul Karim and Kabir. You have been. Uh, wonderful, wonderful contributors. Uh, one just prays that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will let the peace hold in Kano, that we will not have incidents of violence, 
lives will not be lost, and the peace of Kano will be the peace of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very We're much. Grateful. We really appreciate you.